What's up everyone, Amy here. If you are currently using ActiveCampaign and you're not sure how to style your form and get it working on Groove Pages, then this video is for you. I'm gonna show you three methods here. So this video might be a bit long. Use the timestamps in the description area to jump ahead to each method. The first method is easy and it gets the job done. The last method is a bit more technical, but it will give you more control over your form's design on Guru Pages. And if you're not signed up to Active Campaign or Groove Funnels yet, I would really appreciate it if you could support their channel by signing up through my links below. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, first we need to add Active Campaign as an integration in Groove. Click on the hamburger icon, My Integrations, click Add. Under Integration Type, click on that. Select Active Campaign. Give your integration a name. For API key and URL, this can be found in your Active Campaign account. So let's log into Active Campaign and under Settings, click on Developer, copy the API URL here, head back to Groove and paste it in the second box. Back to Active Campaign again, copy in the API key, then paste it in the first box. Once you've done that, the update button should turn pink and click on update. Now I'm not going to click on update because I've already added my active campaign account. And once you add your active campaign account, it should appear over here. Exit out of that. So when you're creating funnels, always create them in the funnels tab instead of the pages tab. The pages tab is where you design your website pages. Now for funnels, all you need to do is click on this. Let's select a blank template. Click on the plus button again blank template, three dots, edit settings, give it a page name, the opt-in URL and the page title, click check. We'll go to blocks, wireframe, empty, drag in an empty container, click on elements. I'm gonna drag in a one column element. And when I click on this, I wanna be in the layout breadcrumb. So I'll click on this and we'll just give it some padding. Okay, we'll go to the size, reduce it, make it a bit smaller. We'll click back on the container level, go to layout, and it's vertical, this and this to center it. And the first method is using active campaign element on group. So you would scroll down under integrations and drag in the active campaign form. You want to head back to active campaign, click on list. And let's create a new list by clicking add a list. We'll call this list name test groove. Enter in your domain name, enter in a list description, click add. Head back to groove. Now, before you start stylizing this form, head up top and make sure that this toggle bar is over to the right so that all devices is highlighted in pink. And it means that any changes you make to this form will be applied across all devices. So with stylizing the active campaign form element, you can click on the label. And once you click on that, you can go to the breadcrumb and see that label is highlighted in pink. And if you wanted to change the text, click on text here. You can reduce the font size change the font text and change the color to a different color if you wanted to. And the same can be applied to the first name label as well by clicking on it. But what I usually do with my forms is that I delete the label. So I'll click on this, click on delete, delete that. And I'll also delete the first name label and delete that. Now what I want to do is click on the first name and drag it on top so that you have the first name input on top and email down the bottom. Next, we want to go back to elements, drag in a H2 heading into the container. So you can see in the breadcrumb that the text element is inside the container. Once it's inside the container, go over to design, scroll down, spacing and add some margin to it. Now we can click on the input, as you can see here in the breadcrumb, click on configure. For input ID, I just copy in first name, input placeholder is this text in here, and you can change that to whichever word. So it could be your first name or enter your first name. Click add validation rule, 
Input type is text and check that input cannot be empty, update. Let's do the same for our email. So we just copy that, paste it in here, check add validation rules, input type is email and check input cannot be empty, update. For subscribe, under configure in button text, I've changed it to download now, button action is submit and update. While we're there, we can click on design and change the background color of the button to green or whatever color you like. And I might go back to the input label to change that background color as well to a light gray. We'll do the same for the email, background, color, and light gray. Okay, that looks good now, but you can also go in and change the text of the input label by going here and changing the text font. Now we wanna go back to the funnel, click on this, three dots, clone, three dots again, edit settings. We'll give this page name, thank you. Page URL, I'll just call it TYP. Page title, thank you. Click the check. And given that this is now turned into the thank you page, Make sure you're in the active campaign component and delete it. Now I'll go back to elements, H2 heading, and I've just changed the heading to thank you. Your free checklist is on its way. Press save. Now we want to head back to the funnels tab, click on it again and click back onto opt-in page. So once someone enters their name, email and clicks on the submit button, we want to redirect them to the thank you page. Now we can click here, making sure you're still in the active campaign component. Click on configure and your integration should appear. The list, I want to select my test groove list that we've created. For the thank you page redirect, select page and we want to link it to the thank you page that we've just created and click on update. This method does the job, it's easy and simple. The cons in this is that you can't add a tag when someone opts into a form on Groove pages unless you create an active campaign automation to add a tag. And when I'm doing email marketing, I always recommend adding a tag. So this moves us on to method two of creating a form on active campaign and embedding it onto Groove pages. Let's log back into active campaign. We're still using the test group list that we've created. Now we want to click on site, forms, click create a form. I'm on the light plan as I'm waiting for Groove Mail and the inline form option is all you really need. Under actions, leave it at subscribe to email list. We'll select the test Groove list, add another action, click on this drop down, add a tag. And this is where you can tag the contact based on the opt-in form they signed up to. We'll just call this test groove, but for you, you should give it the name of your lead magnet or whatever opt-in form they're opting in. Click on create. And the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this active campaign branding. Head over here, click on style, scroll down and toggle this over to the left to remove the branding. I'm also going to the heading, deleting this, deleting the description as well, press OK. Instead of full name, what we want to do is make this a first name. So we'll click on fields, standard, and then drag that in here. That becomes first name. And the default text inside here is type your first name. You can just type in first name and it's reflected in here. Click on the email field and I'll change this default text to your email address. Now I'm going to click on the submit button. We'll change it to download now. Click here inside the form, go to style, scroll down, and we want to change button color to green. So we'll go here and just select green. Go back up top and this is where you can change your fonts. Then click on options. When someone clicks on the submit button of download now, what we want to do is click on this, open URL, head back to group pages. It was in the funnels tab. Click on this. Thank you. And you want to paste in that thank you page URL. So what I'm going to do is publish this. I'll just give this a folder name and then click on the cloud to publish. Now you will go to current page over here, copy the URL. Head back to active campaign on the submit button. 
you're going to paste in that URL. Under form action, everything is fine because once someone enters their name and email into this form, that will be added to the test groove list and a tag of test groove will be applied. Now let's click on the cog wheel for opt-in options. In opt-in confirmation, if this is on, Active Campaign will send that person a confirmation link. Let's toggle this to off so that people don't need to click on a confirmation email link. Press save. Under advanced, I'll uncheck that because I don't want any blank fields to be overridden with existing data. Head back up top, click integrate, and you'll be given several options to integrate your form. What we wanna do is copy this, head back to Groove Pages, back into Funnels, click on this. We'll go back to the opt-in form. Under the Others category, you wanna drag in the code embed. So let's just pop it underneath here. Click on the cogwheel, paste in your active campaign embed code and press save. And I'll just go back to the active campaign element integration. So you click on that, make sure you're on active campaign. Then you can go here, delete that, press confirm and click on the preview icon. The pros with this method is that you can add your tag to your leads and specify which list this contact should be added. The cons is that you have to style and format the forms inside of Active Campaign, not on Groove Pages. The last method is using a post URL integration with Groove Pages standard form elements. Let's go back to Active Campaign and save and exit this form. For this last method, you still need to create a list name as well as form inside of Active Campaign. And you already know how to do this by watching method one and two. So let's go back to site, forms. We're going to use the test form we created. Press edit, options, and make sure on submit, click on open URL, and you would enter in your thank you page URL here. And under advanced, it's still the same. So leave that unchecked. We'll click on integrate. Now, instead of using the single embed form, we're going to use the full embed form. Click on it, copy, and paste this into a code editor. I'm currently using Sublime for Mac, but they also have a Windows version. So let's paste it in. And what we're doing is we're looking for the form code. Click on Control and F together. The Find button will pop up. And what you want to do is type in form method and that's highlighted. I'm just going to put some spacing here so that you can see. Now we're just going to highlight all the way up to top, delete all that. And then you want to scroll down and look for the end of the form. It's right after backslash form, hit enter here. And then you want to delete from this script word all the way down because we don't need all this extra information. Delete that. And what you should be left is the opening of the form, which has the post URL here and the end of the form. Leave this open. Now we're going to head back into Groove Pages, back into Funnels, click on the opt-in page, head to Elements, in Forms. You want to drag in the empty form element first. Next, you want to drag in the input label and drag it inside the empty form element. So if I click on here and you can see the input is inside the form container and that's really important. Now let's stylize this input field by going to background, click on color, change it to a light gray, head back up top in the configure. You want to open up the code editor and you're looking for the input of the first name. So the input of the first name is this line. So you'll copy that, head back to Groove Pages in the configure for the first name, paste that in, paste that in as well. And for the placeholder, that's the word inside the input field. We'll type in enter your first name, click on add validation rules. The input type is text, check input cannot be empty, update. And if we scroll over here, you can see enter your first name as the input placeholder. And what I want to do now is just go to the container level. So not this container, but the very first container. I'll click on that. Let's just go to the size and just make it a bit smaller so that you can see on the screen. Now we want to click back to the first input field. And for this particular text, let's just make it a lighter gray. There you go. Enter your first name. 
and then we want to head to spacing, add a bit of margin to it, then head back here and we're going to clone it by clicking this button. For this input field, we're going to make it an email address. So once you've selected that particular input, as you can see in the breadcrumb here, you will click on configure. And since this is not the first name, we'll delete all of this, head back to our code editor, and we're looking for the input of the email address. So the name for the email address is just email. Copy that back into Groove Pages, paste it in email, and for the input placeholder, I'll just put in type your email for it to appear here. Input type, click on the drop down, select email, leave the check input cannot be empty. Now we want to go back to elements, scroll down again. It's still under the form category and we're going to drag in the submit button. Now I just want to click on this and I've dragged it inside the form container. And that's really important guys. If you click on this, you want to make sure that the form submit is inside this form container. We can then change the background color of the button by going to background, clicking here, make it green. I'll make the font a bit bigger. You can change the font type too, if you like to. Then scroll back up, click on configure. We'll change the call to action button to download now. The button action is submit, press update. Click back on design. And I'm actually gonna go to spacing and just make the padding of the button a bit bigger. Maybe the left and right padding, just slightly a bit. There you go. And guys, just a mental note, always go to the top, toggle it here so they can apply to all changes. Otherwise on the mobile device, it'll look differently. So have that in place first before you start styling and formatting this form. And the last step, is going to elements under others, and you wanna drag in the code embed element right at the top. This embed code is inside the normal container. So if you look at the breadcrumb here, it should be inside the form container instead. So let's try and move this around and let's click on it again. And now you can see the embed is inside the form container, which is what we wanted. Now we'll click on the cogwheel, head back to the code editor, and I just want these seven input fields. You would highlight all of that, copy that, paste it here, press save. And let's do some final checks. The embed is inside the form container. The first name input is also inside the first container. Email inside the form container, as well as the button is inside the form container. That's all really important. Once everything is inside the form container, you want to click here that highlights the whole form container. Now we can go to configure form action would be posts, open up the code editor and you see how it says the word posts here. They've given you an URL, copy all the way up to .php, head back to Groove Pages, paste that URL in here, check enable form validation, click update, then press save, click on publish. I'll publish the whole website. Then we'll go into current page, which is here. Copy that link, open up a new tab, paste that link in, and you can see the opt-in form here. So let's test this form, click on download, and it's done the right thing. It's redirected me to the thank you page. And you can see here that I've just subscribed to my own opt-in form. Let's click on list. In the test group, I can see my name and my email and we can click on site forms. This was the form we created. And if I click on this, I can see myself added to that form. In summary, the last method is a bit more technical, but it's great for those who want to use Groove's form styling and format it to fit their website's font and brand colors. My recommendation, if you're short on time, use method two by embedding your active campaign form because you can assign a tag. However, method three is the best of both worlds because you can format your form and assign a tag. If you found this video helpful, smash that like button for me, subscribe to more videos like this, and until next time, see ya.